In the previous unit, we created these subbasin and reach elements, and essentially what happens with the creation of elements is even though we see the subbasin boundaries and the stream as blue line, but HMS doesn't really use any of that. What it needs is the schematic network and we can see that schematic network by turning off the subbasins and reach elements. So turn off those elements and see how it looks. So to turn off those elements, you will go to map layers and uncheck reaches and uncheck subbasins. If you want, you can also uncheck the terrain and that way you will see the actual schematic network here and that is what HMS uses. So these are our subbasins. Subbasins, they are connected through junctions and reaches and eventually all the hydrograph from the subbasins are added and routed to get the total flow at the outlet that you see here at the red breakpoint. So this is when HHMS's elements are created, basically this schematic network is created and the reaches and subbasins are just for us to see how the, the drainage boundary and the stream network looks. So now that we know what we have in terms of elements, let's go ahead and add those reaches and subbasins to the map. And for now, I'm just going to leave the terrain unchecked because we really don't need it. And we can basically turn off all the GIS layers. So all we need is subbasins and reaches and the schematic network. Right now we only have subbasins and reaches in our HHMS model, but HHMS can also incorporate other elements which you don't see here active, but information about this is provided to you in the handout. Now. What we are going to do is we are going to see what methods we have and what parameters we need to simulate the hydrologic process. So I'm just going to check one subbasin here and after you select that subbasin, you will see the information about it in the component editor here and it will tell you that the downstream reach is reach to we did not provide any description for our subbasin, so which is fine. The lat and longitude information that you see here is basically the, the location of the subbasin element here on the map or the centroid of the subbasin. And then we picked some methods earlier when we changed the program settings. So many of these methods are none because we don't need them. The two important methods that we have in all subbasins are the loss method and the transform method. The loss method that we picked was SCS curve number and the transform method was the SCS unit hydrograph. And then if you want to see the parameters associated with those methods, you will go here and you will see different tabs. So if you click on the loss tab, this is where we are using the SCS curve number method you will see that the main parameter that we need for the SCS curve number method, which is the curve number, right now we don't have a value here and also the initial abstraction is blank. So what we are going to do now is we are going to see how to get the curve number for each subbasin. Now eventually HHMS will have some functions in the program to get the curve number for all the subbasins using the curve number grid we have. So the version that we are using, which is 4.7.1, does not have that functionality. So what we are going to do instead is we are going to use ArcGIS to extract curve number for all these subbasins. And then we will use the output of that GIS analysis in HHMS to get the curve number for all the subbasins. So to do that, let me go ahead and uncheck this subbasin. 
and now we are going to export the shape file of all the sub basins so we can use that in our GIS. Before we do that, let's also see another way of looking at the parameters and that can be done by going to parameters and then loss and SCS curve number and here also instead of just looking at the parameter for one sub basin you will see the parameters for all the sub basins and you can see the curve number is blank so essentially we are going to populate this column by extracting that information from the ArcGIS analysis so let's go ahead and export these sub basins into a shape file so we can use it in ArcGIS. To do that you go to GIS and then you say export georeference elements and we want to export sub basins and say next and we provide the location where we want to save this shape file which has an extension of SHP. So we are going to use the same location where I have all the data for this module which is in C class HMS. So I'll just save it as subbasins.shp and say finish. After we export these subbasins into a shape file, let's go ahead and open that in ArcGIS Pro. So I will open ArcGIS Pro and let's save this map I will again save it in the same folder where I have my HMS project so C class HMS and we will name the map or project as HMS CN so we are extracting CN parameter for HMS you can give whatever name you want so we don't want to create a new folder so I will uncheck that and say OK. Now in this empty map we will go ahead and add the shape file that we just exported from HMS. So to add the shape file you go to the map tab in the top and say add data and you can see since I saved my map in the save folder I see subbasins.shp so I'm going to select that and say OK. Now the map did zoom into the location where we have those sub basins, but sometimes the, it doesn't show up in ArcGIS easily. So a simple fix to that is maybe just change the symbology and let me pick something else and even if it doesn't show up after changing the symbology another way to make sure that the shape file is added is just open the attribute table and select all the features and you will see that the sub basin exists in ArcMap but for some reason it does not show up sometimes and that has to do with some interoperability issues with the shapefile format that HMS created. So we don't really need to worry as long as we know that the shapefile exists it's just some issue with the map display. So now that we have these sub basins in ArcMap let's go ahead and add the curve number grid so again we will use the add data button and say cn grid dot tif and now our cn grid is added so what we are going to do next is we are going to use zonal statistics and we will get the mean value of the cn grid for each of the sub basins. So to use zonal statistics we will go to geoprocessing, we will go to toolboxes, then we will go to spatial analyst tools and within spatial analyst we have zonal. 
and then we will use the zonal statistics as table our input features are going to be sub basins the zone field is a field that we want to use to identify our sub basins we will use name so if I open the attribute table so the name field has all the names sub basin 1 sub basin 2 so we will use that to identify now I have selected all the sub basins so either you can select all of them or not select any of them okay so it should still work but if you just select one or two then it will calculate the zonal statistics only for those selected polygons so either select all of them or don't select any and the input value raster so this is our curve number grid and we will name the output table as let's in the same folder C class HMS I'm going to name this table as CN value dot DBF now DBF is a table format that is supported by ArcGIS so CN value dot DBF and then we have statistics type so we don't want all the statistics we just want the mean value so to keep our output table simple I'll pick the mean value and say run and after the table is created it will be added to the map document so if you open the attribute table now you will see the sub basin name here in the name field and you will see the mean value so the mean value is the curve number that we have for each sub basin so what we have to do now is basically get this mean value column into the HMS CN parameter column that we earlier saw was empty in HMS now to get these values what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this DBF file in Excel then just copy this column and paste it in HMS so I'm going to save my map minimize it and open Excel so blank workbook is fine and then I will go to file open in the same folder where I saved that DBF file so C class HMS and then you will see the CN value dot DBF now you will see two DBF files one is an XML file and the other one is the DBF file so you want to add the DBF file not the XML document so I add the DBF file open and here we have all the sub basins and the mean value so let me just go ahead and sort these by name and then we will use the same sorting in HMS and just copy paste so to sort the values by name field I can go to data in Excel and sort and sort by name so once I do that you will see it is sorted with the name so sub basin 1 11 12 after 18 we have 2 3 4 until 9 now this sorting is good in Excel so let's go ahead and do the same in HMS. so I will go back to my HMS tab here and open the parameter table so to do that I will go to parameters here loss and SCS curve number and let's also sort these by sub basin name and you can do the sorting by using this option here on the top right corner so right now the sorting is by hydrologic elements so let's do alphabetic 
and with alpha basic again you can see it is similar to what we have in excel so 1 until 18 and then 2 it goes until 9 so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy these values so select right click and copy and then go to hack hms and then paste it in the curve number column and you can see all the values are pasted now so apply and you will now see that for each sub basin if you go to loss you will see the curve number okay so we now learn how to extract curve number values for each sub basin as I mentioned, we currently don't have a tool to do this easily in HackHMS. In future, we may, but even now, it is not that difficult because we use the same functionalities that we have used earlier in ArcGIS, which is the zonal statistics tool. And we now have the curve number values for the loss method. In the next unit, we will see how to get the lag time for the transform method. So this is it for this unit. Save your project.